some people, but it's way cheaper than maybe what you assumed. So I just want everyone to know and understand that of all things, of all the freedoms that we are losing, geoengineering is the number one issue that we are facing. Because you can have guns and money and you can have everything. If you don't have food and water and you are dying of respiratory or neurological illnesses, what does it matter? Stevens, I uh, was a television weatherman for 20 years. These chemtrails are absolutely required to impact whatever weather event they were designing. And the trails were an absolute necessary ingredient for them to achieve their weather modification goals. Chemtrails are a key element in the whole thing because they're obviously a way of uh, putting a highly reflective material into the atmosphere. With cloud seeding, the cooling will be achieved by making clouds reflect a bit more sunlight back to space than they would otherwise, and less sunlight reaching the surface would tend to cool the planet. So let's say we were doing geoengineering because we wanted to make uh, the weather a little bit better. The more we see these trails in the sky, the less rain we get. Virtually all scientific data, even from the proponents of geoengineering, state clearly saturating the atmosphere with particulates will create drought. Much has been made of this issue of damage from precipitation. If the issue is understanding the climatic response, which was, I think, most of where this was going, and it's exactly where the precipitation gets higher and lower. There will be monsoon failures during that period. There will be huge hurricanes. It's likely to cause some damage in some places. Global studies indicate there will be some impact on precipitation patterns, and obviously there's a lot more opportunity for work in that area. Just seeding can be pretty effective for the clouds we explored, but the interactions between seeding and precipitation in the form of drizzle are really complex. So we're finding the aerosols, the metal particulates, the weather engineering, whether it's scalar, ionic, or organ, or the chi of the atmosphere, all of those can be used and, and leveraged to create weather events that are several standard deviations or outside what would be typically normal before jumping on the chemtrail bandwagon was i needed a motive without a motive you can't say what they're doing and why they're doing it you have to have a motive uh, what other derivatives are products that uh, commercial hedgers would use such as an insurance company or an energy company to hedge risk that's associated with weather precipitation or a hurricane or general heating days is what they're basically called. Certain temperatures or you know, higher temperatures are going to associate with uh, more energy. So they're going to want to hedge that risk. If you can structure a product where you say, okay, I'm going to buy insurance against it raining more than 10 inches in this area. If my risk is, say, like, say a million dollars, but I'm insuring for $10 million, then I can make it rain and collect the premium on the $10 million? Well, Of course. So the agenda was drought. The agenda was to kill the storm, at least in that one particular spot. You're reducing the food security of people through deploying these kinds of approaches that potentially two billion people could have their food disrupted by such interventions. It affects farmers by their ability to plan what they're going to be growing. You see a tremendous and significant loss of property and uh, crop production. Uh, Many times this will cause farms to go out of business, and when farmers go out of business, they usually have to sell, and then if there's somebody waiting in the wings to buy their land and then uh, turn that uh, land over to the production of genetically modified crops, you can see where there would be kind of a strategic advantage there. And the fact that it's cheap isn't necessarily a good thing at all, as I'll come to in a second. The fact that it's cheap is part of the whole hard problem of governance. The fact that it's cheap means any small state or, or even conceivably individuals could do this, and that is a very dangerous thing. There's only probably under $10 million per year, and maybe far less than that being spent on geoengineering research. Um, it's a mix of a handful of government grants and some private money, including support uh, from Bill Gates. There is a line of research on what's called geoengineering. The climate getting worse means that many years, their crops won't grow. There'll be too much rain, not enough rain, uh, 
things will change in ways that their fragile environment simply can't support. That Bill Gates invests in geoengineering any profits from the destruction through his investment in Monsanto. And Monsanto is coming in and they're saying, we have a solution for your problems. Basically, if you control the weather and the seed source, you essentially control all food production. You can kill a storm in place. That's easy to do with heart. You just change the polarization, you change the ionization of the atmosphere, and the storm will fall apart. HARP is actually an acronym for High Altitude Active Aurora Research Program. And it, uh, in the patents for the HARP system, it describes what is uh, detailed as ionospheric heating. It creates situations where crops are either uh, so severely flooded that they're destroyed. So it's very easy to add those particulates of aluminum, barium, and whatever else they want to put in there. Cool. And as you add heat to that, those particulates then radiate the heat into the atmosphere and it warms. Let's just say the storms can develop more violently, more quickly, um, in places that are not necessarily as uh, where you would expect them to be. We have altered weather patterns that are also stated as consequences of geoengineering. Since these global weather modification programs appear to have been ramped up so radically in the last decade, our, our weather here has changed unimaginably. And we've got technologies available to us now that can do, you know, continent-sized uh, projects. Is all of the persistent trails behind it? So that tells me, Michael, that they are engineering this storm to a great degree. Now all of this stuff is controlled debris or control clouds that have been laid down over Utah and over over Southern Colorado earlier in the day. What we see in the sky matches virtually all geoengineering patents. The fact that hundreds of lab tests taken from all over the globe match exactly the ingredients stated in geoengineering patents as primary elements. But not very much. And there's certainly uncertainty about how bad those effects will be, but they will be extremely bad. One of the most hardy brush forms known, the manzanita, and it, it looks like it's been hit with insecticide. And we're seeing this throughout the ecosystem. And there's virtually no growth, and we see whole plants, whole mature plants, 50, 60, 70 year old, almost trees die out for no reason whatsoever that, that we can find other than the contaminated soils. So if it's in the rain, it's in the soil. And now we see incredibly hardy organisms dying uh, for no other cause that we can find other than the contamination in our rain from these aerosol operations. And so you get ecosystem collapses. And if you control the weather, you're going to control the planet. It's that simple. Since the release of When the World Are They Spraying, millions of people have woken up to these crimes against nature and humanity. We believe the next prudent step, not only in waking, but also activating millions of more people and moving closer towards holding the governments and corporations responsible accountable is addressing the weather control aspect of these damaging programs. Like all federal agencies, is to hide these threats from the public. That's literally what their job is. And we have a system that's full of order followers. It's Kevin, who's, for those of you that haven't heard Kevin speak, CIA officer Kevin Shipp, who would not go along with the system that tries to mask these threats from the public. Because who would have the right to engineer our climate and make our force look like that? And that's that type of sky our society has learned to accept is normal. There's nothing normal about that. We've been accepted a lot of things, been programmed to accept a lot of things as normal. And we're marginalized by our media, by our meteorologists, by our climate science community. We're marginalized for trying to point out obvious truths. How big of an elephant in the room do we need when we see our skies grid and patterned day in, day out, our forests dying? And now we have, as of about several weeks ago, Let's try this. CIA. Another example is the array of technologies, often referred to collectively as geoengineering, that potentially could help reverse the warming effects of global climate change. One that has gained my personal attention is stratospheric aerosol injection, or SAI, a method of seeding the stratosphere with particles that can help reflect the sun's heat in much the same way that volcanic eruptions do. An SAI program could limit global temperature increases, reducing some risks associated with higher temperatures and providing the world economy additional time to transition from fossil fuels. This process is also relatively inexpensive, 
The National Research, Research Council estimates that a fully deployed SAI program would cost about $10 billion <laughs> yearly. As promising as it may be, moving forward on SAI would also raise a number of challenges for our government and for the international community. <laughs> on the technical side, greenhouse gas emission reductions would still have to accompany SAI to address other climate change effects, such as ocean acidification, because SAI alone would not remove greenhouse gases from the atmosphere. On the geopolitical side, the technology's <laughs> potential to alter weather patterns and benefit certain regions of the world at the expense of other regions could trigger sharp opposition by some nations. Others might seize on SAI's benefits and back away from their commitment to carbon dioxide reductions. And as with other breakthrough technologies, global norms and standards are lacking to guide the deployment and implementation of SAI and other geoengineering initiatives. How many think that that's acceptable? That we have the head of the CIA pretending that there could be some bad things happen when you fill the atmosphere with toxic metal particulates, about 20 million tons a year, that they would have the audacity to pretend they, one, have the right to do that, and two, that there could be any benefit in that whatsoever. How could there be any benefit in that at all? <laughs> so now we have... Again, with media trying to marginalize this issue as if it's not going on, it's becoming almost impossible to hide. As you see, Kevin Chip was up here earlier, and he knows how the CIA works. That This is an indication that they know they can't hide this much longer, and it's up to us to speed that process. If we don't speed that process and, and beat the power structure to the intersection so that we expose this issue before they're ready to have it exposed, we have, we have to speed that pace up. Because the damage being done is irreparable in, in countless ways, and it's increasing by the day. For those that don't know what geoengineering is, Brennan explained it partially, but the, the reason we are given for climate engineering is that they are going to put a sun shield up, toxic metal particulates, and no one ever mentions when he says it's relatively inexpensive, about $10 billion oh, wow. a year. What about the fact that we all inhale it with every single breath we take? Is that not an expense? Very How big of an expense is it when we have one out of three seniors in the U.S. dying with Alzheimer's and or dementia? Not dying from it, but dying with it. cause of death now. And the list of human diseases that are associated with aluminum intake is off the scale. How expensive is that, Mr. Brennan? So when you see this type of diagram in science magazines everywhere that show that, that's exactly what's happening. And the mm, other strange. elements they show are yep. simply distractions. Space mirrors? How feasible is that? And they put those kinds of things in there to make people write this whole issue off and walk away and ignore the jet in the air that's spraying them. So these are meant to distract. Now again, when people ask, this comes up all the time again, how do we prove this? How do we prove this is happening? Because we have film footage like this, and we have a lot of this at geoengineeringwatch.org. We have reels and reels of this type of footage and if people don't believe what they see with their own eyes there's nothing you can do to convince them you're talking about somebody in that case that, that doesn't want to wake up but this is the best way to try to wake somebody up and sometimes it just takes time for that seed to sprout and grow as people i mean even with my own background in renewable energy i simply didn't realize this was happening until it affected my own solar pv uptake and people know in the solar industry for example i know people way up on the food chain in the solar industry, and they know this is going on. But in, by one means or another, all control leads back to those who control the purse strings. So even the people in the solar industry, with subsidies and other incentives, are kept silent. Just like the medical community is kept silent about vaccinations, universities are now silent because they're controlled. Monsanto, other agencies control parts of universities. Does anybody wonder where the state's 50 billion dollar deficit in this case of california about 50 billion a year where does that go every year and that deficit is taken care of with central bank printed money that keeps all the agencies quiet all the way down the line right down here to our local shasta county who we know know about the toxic contamination and they're not disclosing it it's part of the reason for our legal filing we have some of our attorneys here so bottom line is how do they how do they pay for this? Printed central bank money. Who are the they behind this? The central bankers. How do they keep the system silent? By controlling militaries and all the agencies down the line because they control the purse strings. Now, this is, this is extremely compelling footage for those who haven't seen it. 
And this is the kind of footage that, that should be sent to people who you're trying to introduce this issue to. That's really, really important as opposed to trying to point at the sky and rant to people because that typically just sets off the defense mechanisms and people don't listen to anything you have to say. That's not condensation, period. Again, the why, I get the why all the time. Why are they doing it? And there's, the answers to that question is there's a stated why and there's a why in reality. The stated purpose is to try to keep business as usual on planet Earth by trying to deflect some of the sun's incoming thermal energy because the Earth's energy balance has been disrupted. And this is important for people to understand that the amount of energy that came in compared to what went out, that equilibrium has been blown to bits. And what they're trying to do to keep business as usual, to keep the military industrial complex moving forward, to keep the population blind to the fact that we are free falling into a planet that will not support life. And this attempt to cover it up is comparable to, for those of you that know about the Gulf of Mexico oil spill and the chemical corrects it, chemical banned throughout the globe, but they used it in the Gulf of Mexico not to make the situation better, but to hide it. And we have environmental impact reports that state corrects it made that situation 52 times more toxic, but they used it anyway. And we think they're still using it, by the way, at the wellhead. An independent expert on deep sea drilling, Matt Simmons, said that on CNN. He was dead two days later in his pool. So, again, it's it's not a wonder why we don't have a lot of whistleblowers going on here. Plain interiors, lots of these photographs online. Now, some of these photographs 